Hello, I'm going to read Fraction Fun by David A. Adler, illustrated by Nancy Tobin. What is a fraction? A fraction is a part of something. We use fractions all the time. When someone says she is eight and a half years old, she is using a fraction. She is saying that she is a fraction, a part of a year more than eight. When you share a granola bar with a friend, you are using fractions too. Each of you is getting only a fraction, a part of the bar. Look at that dog. I'm 21 and a half in dog years. Each time you eat a slice of pizza, you are eating a fraction, a part of the pie. Most often, pizza pies are cut into eight slices, into eight equal parts. Each slice is one of those eight equal parts. Each slice is one eighth of the pie. Let's look at that pizza. If you eat four slices of pizza, what fraction of the pizza did you eat? Yes, you've eaten four eighths of the pizza. What do you notice about the pizza if you eat four out of eight slices? You've eaten one half of the pizza. Great job. Therefore, four eighths is equivalent or equal to one half. If you eat one slice, you are eating one eighth of the pie. If you eat two slices, you are eating two eighths of the pie. You are eating two out of eight equal parts. In the fraction one eighth, the top number, the one, is the numerator. Let's say that word, numerator. The bottom number is the denominator. Let's say that word again, denominator. Good job. Each fraction has a numerator and a denominator, a top number and a bottom number. Now, Let's do some pizza math. It will teach you about fractions. To do pizza math, you would need the following. Three paper plates, all the same size, a pencil, a ruler, and red, green, and blue crayons. All right, let's get started with this pizza math. With the pencil, mark the center of each plate. Using the ruler, draw a straight line through the mark from one edge of the plate to the other. The lines you drew divided each plate into two equal parts. Each part is one half of the plate. If on your plate, one part is larger than the other, it is probably because your marks were not in the exact center of the plates. On one plate, write one half in each of the two parts. With the red crayon, shade in one part. Notice that one half of the plate has been shaded red. On another plate, draw a second line from one edge to the other and through the center mark. Draw it so you divide the plate into four equal parts. Each part is one fourth of the plate. Write one fourth in each of the four parts of the plate. With the red crayon, Shade in one part, one fourth of the plate. On the third plate, 
Draw a second line through the center of the plate, dividing it into four equal parts. Next, draw two more lines through the center of the plate, dividing it into a total of eight equal parts. Each part is one eighth of the plate. Write one eighth in each of the eight parts of the plate. With the red crayon, shade in one part, one eighth of the plate. Now look at the three plates. Pretend each of the plates is a pizza pie. Pretend each red section is a slice of pizza. Which slice is the largest? One half, one fourth, or one eighth? One half is larger than one fourth and one eighth. How many more slices? Would you have to eat from the one fourth pan of pizza to equal one half? You have to eat one more slice. Therefore, two fourths is equal to one half. Which slice is the smallest? What happens to a fraction? As the denominator, the bottom number changes. As the denominator gets larger, the fraction gets smaller. You guess right. As you cut the pie into more and more slices, each pizza slice gets smaller and smaller. With the green crayon, shade in two sections of the third plate. The two sections should be next to each other. You have shaded in two eighths of the plate. With the blue crayon, shade in three sections of the plate. The three sections should be next to each other. You have shaded in three eighths of the plate. If you pretend that the plate is a pizza pie, it's clear that there's more pizza in the blue section than in the green section, and more in the green than in the red. Three eighths is more than two eighths or one eighth. Two eighths is more than one eighth. What happens to a fraction as the numerator, the top number, gets larger? As the numerator gets larger, the fraction gets larger. Now that you know about fractions, you can find the weight of some things that weigh almost nothing at all. You can find the weight of a penny, a nickel, or a dime. To weigh them, you will need a scale, like a diet or post-it scale, a scale that would register as little as one ounce. You will also need a lot of pennies, nickels, and dimes. How much does a penny weigh? If you put one penny on the scale, it seems to weigh nothing at all. Add a penny. Keep adding pennies until the scale registers one ounce. How many pennies did it take? Take the pennies off the scale and do the same thing with nickels. Take the nickels off the scale and do the same thing with dimes. How much does each penny, nickel, or dime weigh? On my scale, 11 pennies together weigh one ounce. One out of 11, one eleventh. Each penny weighs one eleventh of an ounce. Six nickels weigh one ounce, one six. Each nickel weighs one six of an ounce. Thirteen dimes weigh one ounce, one thirteenth. Each dime weighs one thirteenth of an ounce. Which
corn weighs the most. The nickel is the heaviest of the three coins. The smaller the bottom number of a fraction, also known as the denominator, the larger the fraction. One sixth is more than one eleventh or one thirteenth. Which coin weighs the least? That's the smallest. The dime is the lightest coin. The larger the bottom number of a fraction, or also known as the denominator. The smaller the fraction, one thirteenth is less than one eleventh or one sixth. Now get some tissues, envelopes, and pencils. How much does each tissue weigh? If you put just one tissue on the scale, it seems to weigh nothing at all. Keep adding tissues until the scale registers one ounce. How many tissues together weigh one ounce? That number is your denominator. How much does each tissue weigh? How much does each envelope weigh? How much does each pencil weigh? Which weighs the most, a tissue, an envelope, or a pencil? Which weighs the least? Sometimes it's hard to tell if one fraction is more or less than another. Sometimes even though two fractions look different, with different numerators and denominators, they are really the same. To learn about fractions that look different but are really the same, you would need graph paper, a pencil, a ruler, and a crayon. Using your ruler, draw three rectangles on the graph paper. Make each rectangle the same size, four boxes long and two boxes wide. Divide the first rectangle into two equal parts and two one halves. With the crayon, shade in one half of the first rectangle. Divide the second rectangle into four equal parts, one-fourths. Shade in two-fourths of the second rectangle. Divide the third rectangle into eight equal parts, one-eighths. Shade in four-eighths of the third rectangle. Compare the shaded sections of each rectangle. They should look the same, one-half, two-fourths and four-eighths are equal fractions. Coins can also teach you about fractions. There are four quarters in a dollar. Each quarter is one-fourth of a dollar. There are 20 nickels in a dollar. Each nickel is one-twentieth of a dollar. There are 100 pennies in a dollar. Each penny is one one hundredth of a dollar. One quarter is one fourth of a dollar. It's 25 cents. Five nickels are five twentieth of a dollar. They're 25 cents. 25 pennies are 25 one hundredth of a dollar. There are 25 cents too. One fourth, five twentieth, 25 one hundredth are equal fractions. There are lots of other equal fractions. Now that you know about fractions, start looking for them. When a glass is only partly filled with juice, only a fraction of the glass is filled. When you have read one of many chapters in a book, you have read only a part, just a fraction of the book. Keep on the lookout for fractions. They're everywhere. Enjoy, see you next time, and don't forget to practice fractions.